Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sean Rowland, and I'm extremely excited to be with you. On behalf of New Era and the MLB New York City flagship store, welcome to our virtual Q&A with Mets first baseman Pete Alonzo. If you haven't visited our flagship store, please feel free to do so. We're located at the corner of 51st and 6th Avenue, right across from Radio City Music Hall. We have the widest in-store assortment of MLB product anywhere in the world, including exclusive products you just won't find anywhere else. So be sure to check us out. And now the reason we're all here. He's from Tampa, Florida, where he went on and attended the University of Florida and starred for the Gators, where he was all SEC and led the Gators to the 2015 and 2016 College World Series. He was drafted in the second round by the Mets in the 2016 MLB draft. And what a rookie season he had in 2019. I think a lot would call it a career, but he just called it one season. He was the 2019 NL Rookie of the Year. He was an all-star. He won the Home Run Derby. He also hit 53 home runs, which is an all-time MLB record for a rookie, in addition to about the 50 home runs he hit during the Derby that, that year as well. He also capped it off by being first-team All-MLB. Let's give it up for number 20, the polar bear himself, Pete Alonzo. Welcome, Pete. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on. We're excited to have you here today, tonight, and we have a great show planned for all those watching. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. We have some fans here, but before we do all that, I want to um, go ahead and remind everyone to give us a follow on social media at MLB Store NYC. And you'll be able to catch all the latest releases and promotions. So please make sure to give us a follow. Pete, as we get into uh, um, um, the questions here, we're going to be talking about the season. And we'll also be joined by some fans throughout the, throughout the rest of the evening as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and lead us off before we get to those fan questions. You obviously hail from Tampa, Florida. And you recently had the opportunity to play down there against the Rays. So how was it playing um, down in front of your hometown? And also, um, did you have any ticket requests that didn't go, uh, that you weren't able to fill? And, and how was it being able to play in front of family and friends? No, I mean, it's, it's truly a special moment uh, to be able to play in front of family and friends. Because growing up, um, I used to tell my dad that, um, I'm going to play here one day, whether it be as an opposing player or as a Tampa Bay Ray. And to be able to fulfill that dream and that vision and that goal um, is, is really, really special. And um, I, it was really that feeling I had was kind of undescribable. It was surreal. And to me, it felt like full circle. And it was nice to spend a couple nights at home while we were there. But um, thankfully, race race tickets aren't aren't overly expensive. They're not too too expensive. So if I couldn't fill the request, then they'd spend ten fifteen bucks on a ticket to come out to the game. So I'm I'm happy that um, that race tickets um, at the stadium at the Trop aren't overly overbearing like like some stadiums. But it was awesome that anyone who wanted to come out uh, was able to come out. So it was really it was a really special moment uh, to be able to go go back home and, and play. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad you had the opportunity to do so. Um, so now let's get into get into some fan questions. Johnny, for our first question, I know you're excited to come on. Um, Johnny, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and uh, ask your question to uh, the polar bear himself? All right. Hi, Pete. It's uh, Johnny from uh, Brooklyn. I uh, live in the city now. Um, long time Mets fan, lifetime. And uh, my question for you is, you know, when you came up, we, kn we knew about your power. Um, but the, the pseudo knock on you coming in was your defense. And very early on, it didn't seem that would be the case. And even Keith Hernandez said the same thing. He goes, I don't know where people have been saying this. And, and this year in particular, you, I think you've been fantastic as far as uh, diving down the line to catch that ball or to, stretch out, or, or, or to stretch out, for, you know, to complete the double play or to catch the ball from J.D. over at third. I guess my question is uh, – what kind of work have you been putting in? Who who you've been working with, or what kind of work you put in the off season to to kind of get rid of that stigmata about your defense, if you will? 
Well, I, I could say a couple of things, but the first thing is, um, I mean, it's a, it's a black mark that players get in the game sometimes. And it's a tough, it's a tough mark to shake. And even though like, I appreciate you um, really paying attention and, and believing, uh, believing in what you see with your own two eyes. And for me, I put a lot of work. I take a lot of pride in not just uh, my offensive game, but my defensive game and uh, running the bases. I try and be a complete player uh, because there's a lot of different ways to, to win a ball game and to be able to go out there, help my teammates, whether it be make a stretch, make a pick or make a diving play for my pitcher that, um, I mean, I, I want to be able to do those things. And then also, um, I, I think that, um, I, I mean, there's a media can be a little, uh, manipulative at times and especially in the minor leagues, it's, um, I mean, fans don't necessarily get a chance to, to see um, to see that work and that progress with their own two eyes. So I think when it comes to like baseball writers and, and people regarding uh, that are experts with minor leaguers, I think that it's really um, it doesn't necessarily give the, the fans a, a true, honest um, a- example of how the player is represented. So um, I think when players come up, I, I, it's a it's a fresh slate in whatever the fans able to see, they're able to judge with their own two eyes. And I feel like that for me, um, I, I, I feel like coming across from the minor leagues to the big leagues, I started with a clean slate and um, and I was able to be able to perform like like I know how to do like I've always done. And so I, I appreciate you noticing the uh, my improvements and um, I appreciate you believing in me. That's awesome. So thank you. Awesome. That was a great question, Johnny, and, and appreciate the, the, the candidness. Um, let's go to our next question from uh, our, our next fan, Jason. Jason, why don't you introduce yourself um, and, and, and ask your question? Uh, hey, Mr. Alonzo. Um, I'm Jason Rodino, and I'm a big Mets fan. Um, my question is, what is your mindset, and what do you do when you're trying to get yourself out of a slump? Well, the no- my mindset is always, it's always the same because baseball is a game of uh, inconsistencies and the game of baseball can throw so many different things at you. And for, whether it be uh, the pitcher being really good that night or um, the opposing defense making plays or the, the ball not going over the fence because the wind's howling in. So there's so many different factors, but um, the biggest thing for me is to, is to stay locked into my plan and have a and have that mean aggressive mentality in that and that winning chip that winning mentality and that like listen like we're I'm going against you no matter what I'm going to win I don't care what the results have said in the past but right now in this moment I'm going to beat you so I think um, I think for me having that that competitiveness that uh, that spirit that drive that really helps me not just um, come out of a slump, but uh, really attain success consistently. So um, in having tenacity, I feel like it can be applied in a bunch of different areas, not just in sports, but in life as well. That's a great question. And, and Pete, how, how crazy it is that the best players in the world only are successful maybe 30% of the time hitting the baseball. I mean, I, th- I think a lot of people might not realize that, and, and especially at the younger ages, Jason, you seem like you might be a little bit younger, 30% of the time, and you're a Hall of Famer, right? Absolutely, or you should be. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff. Well, pre- appreciate, the, uh, appreciate the question, Jason. We're going to go to uh, John next. John, what do you have? Hey, uh, nice to meet you, Pete. Uh, my name is John Ferrellis from Queens, New York. Uh, my question is... Um, what is your approach to uh, late RBI clutch uh, moment, like your approach to late RBI clutch situations and how does it differ from other situations? Well, the biggest thing for me, I, I want to be as relaxed as possible up there, regardless if there's no one on base and it's my first at bat of the game or if it's late in the ninth inning with two guys on down by one run. So for me, I want to be, um, I want to be as relaxed and as confident as possible. And the being relaxed, I, I want to, that aspect, I want to focus on my breaths. Um, before every time I step into the box, I always try and take a deep breath and let all of my exhale out uh, to calm my heart before I get in the box because 
I mean, if, if a situation can get too big and if my heart starts to beat too fast, um, then I'm not going to, I'm going to have a less of a chance of, uh, of succeeding and getting the job done. And then my confidence, it comes from not just to my ability, but my plan. So I watch a ton of video. I do a lot of, uh, I do my homework on my opponent. So, um, as soon as the guy comes up, uh, or as soon as I come up to the plate, I know exactly what the pitcher has and I, I'm, I'm prepared, not just, not just physically, but mentally as well. So it's a combination of being relaxed, having a plan and being prepared. All right. Our next question is going to be from Mod. Mod, do you want to go ahead and, and ask your question? Hey, Pete. Um, my, my son, Leo, was the biggest Mets fan I ever knew. Um, and he idolized you. Uh, he passed away recently. Um, so I'd like to ask you who your idol was when you were growing up. I'm, I'm first of all, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. And my, my prayers are with you. Um, but for me, um, uh, my biggest, my biggest role models were, uh, number one, my dad and, um, my grandpa's because all of them, they, they taught me, um, they taught me to chase after my dreams and chase after my passions and, and, and be unapologetic about it. And, for me, I think that if you have a passion or if you, if there's something that you want to do, don't leave any stone unturned and, and put everything that you have into it. And for me, I think having that um, upbringing for me is just super inspirational because they could just be like, all right, whatever you want to do, do it, but make sure you do it a hundred percent and be able to, whether it be with business relationships or with sports, like for me, like my, um, my, my parents and especially my dad and my grandpa, my grandpa's there just like if you're gonna do it you better do it 100 percent. so I, I feel like i owe a lot of my um a lot of my success because from my upbringing because they were super supportive of me always then also they made sure that i if i was doing something i was doing it all the way and not doing it not taking the easy way out all right mod appreciate that appreciate you joining us all right, our next question is going to be from Alex. Alex, do you want to go ahead and ask your question to Pete? Hey, Mr. Alonzo. Um, my question is, what were your emotions before and after the home run derby? I mean, before I felt, I felt like a little kid. Um, I, 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 I felt like a little kid because <clears throat> at that time, it was like a dream come true. But when it came time to, to perform, there's something deep down inside of me. It's like, I'm not losing. I'm not losing. And after it was just, just pure, pure adrenaline, pure ecstasy. I just wanted to, I mean, I, I was just the happiest, happiest person on this earth and no one could, could take the smile off my face. I mean, it's a, it's a childhood dream to come true and I'm, I'm excited to, um, I'm excited to do it again. That was awesome. Well, you, you, you certainly captivated, captivated the world uh, that, that evening for sure. And, and you looked like a little kid out there yeah. um, um, playing. It was like, like back to Little League all, all, all over again in the backyard. Absolutely. That's what it's all about. Yeah. All right, Nick. Nick, welcome. What's your question for the polar bear himself? Hello, Pete. What's up, man? My name is Nick. Uh, Born and raised in the Bronx, we won't get into that. But I live in Queens now, five minutes from City Field, so I'm a I'm a Met fan by uh, by default. <laughs> My wife's a big Met fan too, so oh uh, yeah, yes sir. Uh, you kind of answered this question, but um, I'm a high school varsity coach, and uh, I wanted to keep it baseball related. Uh, so gotcha. what type of what type of T drills or like on plane drills do you do in season uh, when you find yourself kind of not making the con uh, type of contact that you that you'd like to make at the plate? Well, I think T is incredibly important. Um, I mean, ultimately I do. I mean, I, I, so I wish I could like show you in person because it's, it's, uh, like with the intent and how it should look. But, um, I guess the biggest thing for me, um, is being on being early. Like if being early, when, uh, when you tell your kids, if, if you have anyone that's, that's being frustrated, um, uh, with whatever's going on at the dish when they load to hit load to see don't load to hit because if you load to see 
then you're going to be able to uh, react to whatever is um, wh- whatever pitch is going to come or have a better chance to react the right way. So load to see and then let and then have them. I know it's it's really tough. Um, I mean, at any level, but trust your eyes and trust that your body's in the right pl- in the right place. Once you're able to see being early is I, I can't stress being early is um, it's that's huge because. I mean, it's every, the entire game. It's about perception. It's about seeing the ball. So I think having um, being locked in and ready to go early, ready to fire. So biggest thing for them, it's like, yes, 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 no. And always be ready to fire if that ball gets in that in that little area, that little honey hole. Hunt, hunt in the honey hole, whatever you do, don't come out of it regardless. I mean, two strikes, you got to battle, you got to grind, but know where the honey hole is, but don't come out of that, especially early in the count. Right. Awesome. Thanks for the tips, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Right. Anytime. Yeah. Good luck, Nick. The rest of the rest of the season. I, I hope your team's firing on all cylinders after that. <laughs> Two and five, man. Not too good, but we'll, we'll pick it up. <laughs> all right. Hang in there. All right. Our next our next question is from Andrea. Andrea, why don't you introduce yourself and and say your question? Awesome. How's it going? Good. Thanks. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad. Uh, I'm in New York City, so it's a beautiful day today, which is awesome. Um, and well, I just wanted to share, unlike everybody here, this is actually my first year watching baseball and being a baseball fan in general. So this is a great treat and the Mets have been just awesome this season. And part of what I think has made the season really fun is your post-season or post-game interviews about Diesel Donnie. <laughs> Um, and I love a good story. So I'm curious, you know, what were your first impressions of Diesel Donnie? I mean, since Donnie came into the clubhouse, I mean, he's really had a positive impact on guys. And I mean, he's, I mean, he helps us get locked in for sure. And he's, um, I mean, he's great. He's always doing research and and helping us uh, get our mental approach right. So, I mean, he's there for the guys and he's always there to fire us up. So, I mean, I really, really appreciate all of Donnie's help. I mean, he, he's been huge. He's been huge since, uh, I think, what was it? Philly where he got hired. So he's been, he's been great. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Andrea. All right. Next we have Danny. Danny, welcome. Hey, what's going on, Pete? How are you, brother? Good, Danny. All right. So my question for you is what's the most challenging part about playing in New York? Is it the fans? You know, we love you. We love you. We hate you. You know, um, the, you know, the media is always part of the jobs. Is it the limelight? What's the hardest part for you coming out here? Yeah, I think that being able to do it in New York, it's it's really special. Um, I, and I think that at the end of the day, it's it doesn't matter where where it is because we still have to face the guy on the field. And in New York, to me, is just really special because, um, I mean, there's. I, I don't necessarily take any of the the fan stuff or the media stuff personally because New York, New York's New York at the end of the day. It's the biggest market. It's the biggest spotlight. And to me, I love that. And to be able to succeed in um, in that and having the passion from the fans, like it's exhilarating, man. Especially when more and more people get back into the stadium, like feeling that feeling that mojo, feeling that swag, feeling that energy from the fans and from the city. Uh, when we were on that like second half roll, like trying to on that postseason push, like that was special. And I, being a part of the team uh, or the organization, I should say, and, um, getting drafted in 2016 and seeing uh, watching from afar in 2016 Mets going to the postseason, going to the postseason, like I I, I want I want more of that. I want more of that. And and to be able to do it in New York, I, it's there's going to be. No better, no better feeling, not just for us players, but for not, I mean, for the fans and for the city as well, because I, I, I being representing the city of New York, it fires me up. It really does. So there's a lot that comes with it. There's a lot of responsibilities comparative to other places. Yeah. But you know what? It's worth it. All of it is worth it. All right. Bring it on this year. Bro. Let's go Mets. Oh yeah. Let's go Mets. I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, we're, we're getting towards the end here, but uh, Matt, Matt, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah. Hey, Pete, thanks a lot for taking the time, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm in New York City right now. It's a beautiful day. Excited to have you guys back soon. Um, my question is, which ballpark besides City Field do you feel plays best to your strengths as a hitter? 
Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I it just depends on yeah. There, I, that's a that's a really good question. But for me, I really love hitting in Dodger Stadium and Fenway, um, and also Wrigley, just because it's like historic and feels it it feels different. I mean those those places are incredibly hist- I mean I'm a baseball geek I'm a I'm a I'm a fan I was a fan before I was a player so being able to to have my cleats touch the dirt of those stadiums is really special and um I feel that like ghosts of baseball pass are 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 there within the walls of the, of certain stadiums and um it, those those places are really special but there's I mean there's certain other places where I just see the ball well like it's a nice background like I like hitting my in Miami I think um I think National Stadium is a great place to hit. Um, I like St. Louis a lot, but there's certain places where um, it, it, I just see the ball really well. So, it, it, I mean, it just depends. But my favorite places to play outside of city are the three historical parks, Dodger Stadium, Wrigley, and uh, Fenway. Perfect, Pete. Let's go Mets. I love GM. Thanks, Matt. Love it. This has been an absolute pleasure. And we really appreciate your time and your honest answers to the question. Um, what's one last thing you want to leave fans with before we jump off? Well, I, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody who's, uh, I mean, all your questions, all everyone who's on the Zoom, all the questions were incredibly awesome. And um, I mean, I, it's just awesome to, to play for a team like New York, represent New York City. And uh, I mean, I, I love it. And our, our goal is to win a championship this year. And I'm so excited. I mean, it's this year has been this. We have a really special group and I, I, we're just going to keep on rolling. I mean, we've we've had plenty of adversity this year, but um, the amount of character uh, in the clubhouse is is at an all time high. And it's uh, how these guys go about their business and work and grind every day. It's special. And to be a part of it, it's I'm a lucky guy, uh, not just to do it with these guys, but do it for the city of New York as well. So thank you so much. And it's really, it's really a pleasure um, wearing the orange and blue. Well, that's great, Pete. We really appreciate it. And thanks again. This has been a lot of fun. Um, fans, just a reminder, please go check out our flagship store in New York City, where we feature the New Era Cap Wall, and it showcases an authentic collection of fitted caps for each team. The store also maintains 10,000, yes, 10,000 total authentic and lifestyle MLB caps. So get there today and check it out. Thanks again for tuning in and everyone have a great night.